It's been about two months, and those of you that know me know that every about two months I create a Questcraft video for you, just in case things have changed, and to show you how to upgrade your Questcraft instance, so that you can get the latest Minecraft version, and just in case something was broken when Meta released a Quest update, which does tend to happen quite a bit with these unofficial apps. So, what is up everyone, I'm Mystical, and today I'll be showing you how to install the latest version of Questcraft so that you can be running the latest version of Minecraft Java fully standalone on your quest. So let's jump right into it. So in case this is your first time installing Questcraft, you do have to remember that to install any unofficial app on the quest, you have to have developer mode enabled. So that is the first thing you are going to be required to do. Enable developer mode on your Quest Pro or Quest 2. Or in the future, who knows, probably Quest 3. Once you have developer mode enabled, you can then jump on to a computer, as you will require a computer once in order to install this app onto your headset. Or, alternatively, if you have SideQuest already installed on your headset, you can just search up for Questcraft in there and install it directly on your headset without the need for a computer. So, in case you're using the computer method, you will now require SideQuest downloaded and installed onto your computer. Then, connect your turned on headset to your computer and accept any dialogues that might show up. Once your headset is successfully connected, you should notice that the name of it appears up in the top left of SideQuest. Once this happens, you know that your headset is connected to SideQuest, and this is where I highly recommend you back up your game files. So, let me show you how you do this. Of course, if you don't have any saves or any servers that you want to save, you do not need to do this, as in that case, you can just format the application and have a clean install. However, because I do have some saves that I will want to save, all you have to do is inside SideQuest, go to your app section right here, then find Questcraft on the list and press on backup. This will back up all your save files and everything from Questcraft to a safe place on your computer. After your backup is complete, you can proceed to uninstall the application. The reason we uninstall the old version is so that there isn't any conflict between the old version and the new version. So now you can search for Questcraft inside SideQuest and then press sideload. This will install the Questcraft application from your computer onto your headset. It's that simple. There's not much more to it. Now that Questcraft is successfully installed, you can restore that backup that you backed up earlier back into the game files. You will need to find the save files that SideQuest has backed up, and we will need to delete everything that isn't the save files, as we don't want to restore the rest of the game in case those files have been updated, or there's some bug fixes there, or anything like that. We just want the saves. To find out where your saves are being saved, click right here. Mine are being saved on the desktop. So I'm gonna open that folder right up, go into data here, find the latest backup, then go into files, then go into .minecraft and delete everything that isn't the saves folder. This should keep the backup inside SideQuest, but when you restore, it should only restore the saves files and nothing else. You will also want to go one level higher and where the .minecraft folder is, delete everything that isn't the .minecraft folder. There you go. You now have an empty backup with nothing but the save files. You can now proceed to restoring the backup. Once this is complete, you will find the Questcraft application inside the unknown sources tab where all your apps are installed. Now, in case you do not have a computer and instead want to use an Android phone, unfortunately, iPhones are not supported, you can install the SideQuest application onto your Android phone from the Play Store. Yes, they have an Android app. They've actually had one for quite some time now. Now, in case you want to use an Android phone, there's a few things that might not exactly work out here. First of all, you can't create a backup through the mobile version of SideQuest. And secondly, you can't uninstall apps through the mobile version of SideQuest. So in case you already have an older version of Questcraft installed on your Quest, you will first need to uninstall it inside the Quest, or else the newer version might not install. And this will remove all your saves and all your servers. Backing this up without a computer gets a little bit more complicated. Once you're done uninstalling the old version of Questcraft, you can jump back into your phone. And then using a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable or an OTG adapter, you can connect your Quest to your phone and give it all the necessary permissions. Accept any dialogues that might show up and now your Quest should be successfully connected to SideQuest on your Android phone. Then you can search up for Questcraft on your Android phone, press on sideload, and now the app will be installed from your phone 
onto your quest. And then finally, and this is my favorite method, and personally, I think this is the method everyone should be using. Once again, if you have SideQuest already installed on your headset, all you do is you launch that. Now inside SideQuest, on your quest, all you do is you search up QuestCraft and hit install. It is that simple. If you have SideQuest installed on your quest, which is why I highly recommend you do install it, it is essentially a second app store right there on your quest, giving you access to a whole ton more apps, which is absolutely incredible. Okay, now let's jump into the quest itself and check out what the new QuestCraft update does. So as usual, to find any Unknown Sources app, you're going to want to go into your apps, press on the search bar, then click on Unknown Sources. I like filtering by recent here, and QuestCraft should show up at the very top. In case this is your first time launching QuestCraft, this is the menu that you will see. What you want to do here is press on sign in, and then go to microsoft.com forward slash link on a different device. Whether it's your phone or computer, it doesn't matter. On this website, you would want to type in the code that QuestCraft gives you, and then sign in to your Microsoft account. This is the Microsoft account that you have purchased Minecraft Java on, as let's remember, this is Minecraft Java. Once you're done this, you will want to press sign in again inside QuestCraft, but this time it will bring you to the menu screen. Here, you can see that we're running the latest version of Minecraft with Fabric installed, and next to that is that big play button that you can now press. Once you press the play button, everything will start downloading. You just need to be patient and wait. Once it's done downloading, this message will disappear and you can press play again. Once you press play, wait a little while. You will be stuck on the three dots loading screen for quite some time. However, after this, you will see the Mojang screen and QuestCraft will fire up. From here on out, you can start playing the game. And as you can see, the save files that I backed up earlier are now showing up inside my game, meaning the backup restore was successful. The first thing I noticed jumping into this new version is that it seems to be much, much smoother. I know that in the past, when Meta released their software updates, there was a memory leak and there was a bunch of different problems. However, the game does seem to be running much smoother now. Yes, there are still some pretty annoying hiccups from time to time, but I'm sure that this could be fixed with a little bit of tweaking on my end, possibly giving it more RAM or something like that. I do find it incredibly impressive how smooth this game runs. I am fully able to play survival mode here without dying or lagging out or the game crashing or anything like that. As a matter of fact, I was able to fully build a house outside now without having to run into a cave to hide from monsters before I managed to finish. This instance of QuestCraft is running on Vivecraft, meaning you get all the features that you may know from the PC edition, including being able to switch the items on your bar using your hand and breaking blocks physically by actually swinging the item that you're holding which I find really, really cool, and this is definitely something that boosts immersion. Remember, you can play on servers using QuestCraft, however, you need to be careful which servers you join, as some servers may not allow you to play in virtual reality, and you don't want to get banned. There are QuestCraft-specific servers that you can join, though, where you don't have to worry about being banned, and I will leave a link to their Discord down below in case you want to get a link for those, or just join their community. Now, with the Quest 3 slowly coming out, I do think that QuestCraft will be able to run on the Quest 3 and run much better than it's running on the Quest Pro and Quest 2, hopefully, with all the bugs fixed and with more power to use. And an update actually released just today as I was recording this video, which I find incredibly impressive. They have fixed the game a lot, and the fact that it runs on the latest version of Meta's firmware and the latest version of Minecraft right now is really, really good for those that want to play. So, absolutely amazing. You know, Meta didn't want to give it to us, Mojang didn't want to give it to us, so the community gave it to us. That's it for the latest version of QuestCraft. So there you guys go. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I hope it could help you out and I will see you once again in another QuestCraft video in two months. If you liked it, please do leave a like. If you disliked it, I guess this button works too, but let me know why down below. If you guys have any issues or just want to chat with the community, we have a Discord and a Reddit down below where I would love to see you posting your spice memes. Thank you so, so much to all the Patreons supporting me throughout my journey where I'm moving, where I'm moving country. Much love to you guys. Seriously, your help your, your help is irreplaceable, so much. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified about your content coming up on a channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with your forehead, ding my bell, and see you again in the next video. Peace.